Welcome to one of the most hilarious events in Southern Gospel music. It's Comedy Classics and Characters 2 with Glenn Payne, Les Beasley, James Blackwood, Joel Hemphill, Wendy Bagwell, Brock Spear, Rex Nealon, Ben Spear, Anthony Berger, and your host for the evening, Dr. Jerry Goff. What a crew we've got to listen to this afternoon. I think this bunch is great, I'll tell you. They've got more chicken under their belt than any man that's ever walked being a gospel singer. And we love them all. You know them, and they've got some fabulous stories to tell you, and you're going to enjoy them. Now, you've been hearing them sing, but now you're going to hear them in a different manner. I look up here, and man, I've been knowing some of these guys. All of these fellas started right after the very first quartet in history. The first quartet was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then this bunch. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. And how about it for Mr. Les Beasley? He's got yeah. more. How about that? Les Beasley. Uh, you, you're supposed to say Long Beach. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, no. no. Here no, comes. No. This is on uh, our uh, illustrious host of the evening. Uh, no matter, uh, he's the and greatest. moving right along. <laughs> he's the greatest at what he does, uh, a real crowd pleaser. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes a crowd can get the best of you. And, it did get the best of him one night in Long Beach. Uh, uh, I know that James was there, the Blackwood Statesman and the Florida Boys and uh, Jerry and his group. And Jerry's having a, a terrible time, and it wasn't his fault because the sound was really atrocious that night. The people kept saying, turn it up, turn it down. Turn it up, turn it down. Turn it up, turn it down. Finally, Jerry said, you say turn it up, turn it down. I'm going home, and he started to walk out. <laughs> And a lady in the audience said, good night. <laughs> good to tell her. Now let me tell one on myself. In the same, same auditorium, we followed the Blackwoods and Statesmen. That wasn't a good thing to do in the 60s. <laughs> And when we finished, I did them a record plug, and I said, now, nah, don't go home at intermission, because we always do better after intermission. And the lady, it may have been the same one, I don't know, she said, well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, our next guest, I'll tell you, he's got more miles on him than a Michelin tire, I guarantee you. <laughs> We're proud of him. How about it for Mr. Gospel Music, our very own James Beckwood. Yeah. Well, Jerry, since J.D. is not here today, most of my stories are going to be on him. <laughs> That's why he's got so much showing up. <laughs> Go for it. Look, years, several years ago, uh, J.D. and the Stamps were booked to sing, give a concert on an Indian reservation in, in Arizona. It was through the government somehow. The government was going to pay them. At that time, I think it was $1,500 flat, which in, at that time was big, big money for Cortez to sing. So the Stamps pulled up out at the, uh, this town they were supposed to go to, and to the auditorium where the concert was going to be, and uh, went in to meet the manager. And the manager said, what can I do for you? He said, we're here to give a concert. He said, no, you're not going to give a concert here. J.D. said, oh, yeah, we've got a contract here. If we swing, sing tonight, we get $1,500. said, well, you're not going to sing here tonight. And uh, J.D. said, yeah, oh, yes, we are. The guy said, well, there's a wrestling match here tonight. <laughs> J.D. said, I don't care. We're going to sing. He said, well, you have to wait till the wrestling match is over. Okay. So house filled up with people. Two or 3,000 people came in for it. They gave, they gave, the rest of the match was over. Everybody got up and left. <laughs> J.D. and the staff come in, set up their sound system. They gave a full concert to a completely empty house. <laughs> and on, on, 
encore you ever saw. <laughs> That's tremendous. He wasn't going to miss that flat, would he? Does that tell you how hungry these guys have been through the years, huh? How about that head button contest that you got involved? Oh, uh, when Jackie Marshall was playing piano for us, one time we had, before we got bought the first bus, we had a seven passenger car. JD and Jackie were in the back seat. And so they got to talking about which one had the hardest head. <laughs> so they got, well, we just said last. So JD on one side, Jackie on the other, and they came at each other and butted heads like this. And they kept on and on until finally JD said his head was hurting so bad he's going to have to quit. And said that, then Jackie the past said, Well, said, I used to have a pet goat, and me and the goat butted heads all the time. That's the my head was so hard. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, I wish J.D. was here. I wish he'd walk I'm, in unannounced, don't I'm you? Dead. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Oh. This next guy, he's been singing since he was a teenager. Man, that's back in the Middle Ages somewhere. And he does a fabulous job, and we want to hear from him. How about it from our very own Glenn Payne? How about it? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think one of my most embarrassing moments is on stage, and we were in, uh, with the cathedrals in uh, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And we had probably a couple of hundred people. That's a big crowd for us back then. And uh, it was Good Friday before Easter. Good Friday before Easter, and I'd sung a song, and a song that George had written, packed and ready to go. And I'm shouting around there, having a good time, as I can do sometimes. And I'm testifying a little bit, and I said, it was good. Now, take in mind, it was Good Friday before Easter. I said, we're so happy to be here tonight with all you good people on Jesus' birthday. <laughs> you know, I think we ought to hear from Wendy Bagwell. How about Wendy Bagwell, ladies and gentlemen? How about Wendy? On, hey, Wendy, how about uh, Jerry's medical habits? What's, what's that story about? What now? How about Jerry's uh, medical habits? What, what are... Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. I, I couldn't hear you. I'm getting a little deaf on the list. Uh, one time we were on the way, there's a stretch of highway that goes over to the, the coast that don't, don't have much on it. And we, we was headed that way, and one of the boys was having a little problem and threw a pack of Fini Mints up on the table. <laughs> we may not can use this. Do we want to hear it, huh? All right. <laughs> it's it, a fact with my hand up. If I, <laughs> if I had to die where I'm sitting, this story's the truth. He, he just threw them up on the table up where we sit in the front of the bus. And, uh, and Geraldine's always coming up hunting something to eat or some snacks or something. And uh, I didn't even know what they were. I hadn't even seen them. But she just opened them up and started chewing them. And she probably chewed three or four or five of them. I don't know how many. And then, and then she went on back to her room. And uh, I don't know how much time elapsed in this. But I know one of the guys drove, and it was my time to drive, and I was, I was driving at the time. And, and you know how if somebody comes up that aisle real fast, it'll kind of move that bus a little bit. I felt that bus move it, and Geraldine come tearing through the door, and she said, pull this bus in the truck stop right this minute. <laughs> Her eyes looked like a wild animal. <laughs> And I, I said, and I'm driving along, and I look around, I said, Geraldine, there ain't no truck stop. I said, pull it in a truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I said, I said, Geraldine, there ain't no truck stop. I said, what's the matter with you? I said, there ain't no truck stop. I'm wrong. She said, open that door. <laughs> I said, Geraldine, we're doing 75 miles an hour. Wait a minute. I should have pulled in. <laughs> Wendy Bagwell. Oh, my. Wendy. 
Thank you, thank you. I guess that's called life on the run, isn't it, huh? Uh, Joel, I saw your hand. Yeah, the other night, Labriska and I were downtown Nashville, and we met a group of tourists. And, uh, and this one lady had a baby in her arms, and so as they passed us, she kind of did a double take, and I thought, well, she probably recognized me. So, but I went on, and uh, in a minute I heard her say, Mr. Bagwell, Mr. Bagwell. I turned around and I said, she said, I think you're so fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Way over on the end over there, a guy that's got so many miles on him. Ben, what about a lady with a camera? Don't you have a story? One year back in the 70s, we, uh, we toured a whole year with uh, Doug Oldham. And uh, we were giving a program in uh, Rock Island, Illinois. And there was a lady over on this side, about right there, that, that had a camera. And she must have had two dozen rolls of film. Because <laughs> she made pictures all night long. Now, it'd be okay to sit in your chair, you know, and make pictures. But no, she had to get up and walk to the edge of the stage, right in the center, always to get her pictures. Yeah. Well, this had been going on all evening, several trips back and forth. So during the second half, she came up, and I, I, I'd seen Hovey Lister do this, you know, where he gets a camera and turns it around toward himself this close and snaps it, you know, and the flash goes off. I said, that lady's been trying to get a picture of me all night long, and I ran up there and took the camera from her and did that. And of course the crowd laughed, and she laughed, and did like this on the stage, you know, and her wig fell off right there. <laughs> I've got another wig story. Oh, okay. We went to the Holy Land back this past February and was baptized in the River Jordan and what an experience. But following us was a sweet lady on the tour with us. They baptized her in the River Jordan and her wig went floating down the river. <laughs> How about you telling us about a runaway bus, huh? There was a little uh, gospel group in Nashville that lived uh, well over in uh, Madison, not far from our house. So uh, we found out he was sick, and I went over. He wouldn't go to the doctor. And uh, so I went over to try to encourage him to go to the doctor and find out what was wrong because he was in real bad shape. So we prayed with him, and uh, he said, no, I won't go to the doctor. But, I mean, he, he was a, a very sick man. So I said, well, is there anything else I can do for you? If I can't take you to the doctor or whatever, is there anything else I can do? He said, well, this old bus of mine is sitting out on the street, and, uh, and I'm afraid the neighbors are going to complain. Would you take it over to your bus lot and, uh, and keep it until I get able to, to move it? And I said, sure. So most of the buses I've driven, you have to put them in neutral. The standard shift, put them in neutral to crank it. And then, you know, build up your air, and then you have brakes and power steering and all this. Well, this was a big, old, clumsy bus. Me and, Joe, uh, me and Trent got in the bus, and I got under the wheel. Trent was standing in the wheel well. Joey was going to fall in the van. And I put this thing in neutral. Never got it cranked. It took off down the hill. <laughs> I mean, a steep hill. And I could, had no brakes, no hand brakes, nothing, no power steering. I mean, it was, it was just a bus run away out of control. So Trent and I looked at one another real quickly. Not a word was exchanged between us. Trent, of course, now my sons are bus tycoons, as a lot of you know. They have a lot of buses and all. But anyway, he was about 18 years old. And we looked at one another and sized it up. And Trent reached over and got the handle and opened the door and said, Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Oh, 
we haven't heard from Rex Nealon over there. How about Rex? How about a halibut steak? When I was with the uh, Homeland Harmony Quartet in uh, 1955, I had never been anywhere or, or seen anything hardly, so uh, pretty, pretty new and uh, there's a whole lot of things green, a whole lot of things I didn't know. So uh, we had stopped to eat, and uh, most of the time I just ordered a hamburger steak because I knew what it was. And uh, uh, so this particular time I decided I'd order something a little more, uh, a little more uptown. So I ordered, ordered the steak. Everybody ordered what they're going to have. A few minutes, the waitress come back, give everybody the orders, and said, "Who had the fish?" Wasn't me. I, did, I didn't order fish. So <laughs> she said, "Somebody at this table ordered fish." I, Connor said, "Rex, did you order fish?" I said, "No, I didn't order fish. I didn't want fish. I ordered a steak." And uh, the waitress said, "Somebody ordered fish at this table." <laughs> and I got the menu and I said, "Right here, the steak I ordered, the halibut steak, right here." <laughs> Have you been in a situation similar to that? How about the hiccups? <laughs> yes. I'd rather forget that. <laughs> I was reminded of a little story Dad used to tell. He used to be a singing school teacher. Taught folks to sing shape notes and so on. And he was up conducting and teaching them conducting how to lead music in church and so on. So. There was two old ladies in the back who were just talking back and forth. They weren't paying any attention to, this, to the lesson or anything. So, Daddy, in order to teach them to watch the conductor all the time, he would have them sing a while, and then he'd bring them up to a big, long note and then cut them off like that, and uh, that would be silence. And if you didn't, if you didn't get into the silence bit, it, would, it was a shame on you. But... Anyway, he, he got going with them on another song, and he brought them up to a big hole, and then he cut it down like that. And when he did that in total silence, one old lady in the back said, We fry ours in butter. <laughs> Uh, another one, these are, these are just happenings. We were in Chattanooga one night and sang in a church full of people were there. And um, so they took an offering for us. And Ben was just a little boy. He used to play a ukulele back then. And he was just a little kid. Well, the guy, the, the not the guy, the preacher, had, him, had us all to come and line up and say, we'll have the spirits to sing again in just a moment. First, I'd like to tell you what the offering was. $29 and a half. Ben looked up and said, Is that all? <laughs> all right. Okay, the hiccups. We had scheduled to do our 75th Diamond Anniversary Jubilee record on the 27th of July, which is a Thursday night in Acuff Theater. And about three days ahead of that, I got hiccups real bad. We were up in, over in Oklahoma, and I went to a doctor there. And uh, then I went to another doctor when we got to Nashville. And, and uh, part of the big, uh, big arrangement was that we were on uh, the entertainment tonight. We were on the network, the TNN network, and I said um, to Faye, I said, what if I still got this when we get to this weekend? Oh, sure, you'll be through with that. They don't last that long. Five days later, I still had them. And uh, so I went to a regular, a regular family doctor, it was a lady, and uh, she gave me a muscle relaxer. <laughs> Now, 
I don't do muscle relaxers real good. <laughs> that was a, on a Monday night. We were booked on TBN. They gave us the whole hour. The Laverne Tripp show gave us the whole hour. So I took one of those right at the beginning before we went out on the stage. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Laverne Tripp called us around and he was talking to us and uh, Dwayne Allen was there as our, our guest and Brian, my youngest son, said, Daddy, I thought you was going to fall right out of that chair. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't and um, the further the program went, the worse I got. <laughs> Faye says, I don't think you realize how slow you're talking. <laughs> Sure enough, I didn't realize it. <laughs> and um, so they called us all out on the stage, and, and at this time, I was out in La La Land. I didn't know what I was <laughs> or what was going on. And they called us out on the stage, and Sue Dodge was right in front of me, and I heard this intro start, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And I thought, boy, what is that? <laughs> 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 that is familiar to me, but I... I said, Sue, what, what song is that? I never shall forget the day, Brock. She snapped at me. I said, well, you have to feed me the words. I don't know the words to this. He hadn't sung it but 500 times. <laughs> and so we walked on out on the stage there. And uh, later on, Faye said, you know, you look like you were drunk out there. I said, yeah, and now I know how J.D.'s been making it all these years. <laughs> Les, what was that about Brock I just caught off? Well, uh, continuing uh, about him not taking the relaxers, I agree, he should not take a relaxer. He doesn't need it because he can go to sleep without it. Uh, <laughs> I know one time, not too long ago, Paul Howell was interviewing he and I. Paul's sitting here, and I'm sitting around the corner, and Brock is here. And Paul talked to me, I guess, a minute or two, and I, he asked me a question, and I thought I knew the answer, but I was going to verify it by Brock, and I turned to Brock, and he was snoring. <laughs> oh, my! <laughs> was... Oh, my! They're on your case, Brock, I'll tell you. You're the granddaddy of this crowd, it looks like. Hey, Brother Wendy, how about that flight? How was your flight? Budget. Budget. <laughs> <laughs> All the shows I get on are budget. <laughs> Plane, planes started pulling in in Atlanta. I'm down on the far end, and me and a guy standing there looking at the window. I said, is that our plane? He said, yeah, it's coming this way. I said, wow. You know... You know how the back of your bus gets when you break the oil line? That's the way it looked around the motors on that thing. That's budget. And, and I said, what kind of plane is that? He said he thought it was an FC-107. I said, FC? I never heard of that. He said, fat chance. <laughs> This, this, this is a fact, what I'm telling you with my hand up. I got, I, I, when I'm on fly in the morning, I don't ever eat breakfast. Now, most people don't like the food on a plane, but I like the food on a plane. It's surprising. It's different. <laughs> I'm always amazed at what they can do with eggs. <laughs> they can get them in a little block like this. They put something in there, and, like meatloaf. They put tartar sauce on it or something. They make eggs different. So I'm always excited about eating. This is a fact what I'm telling you. The lady, the, 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 the lady came down, but I wasn't smelling nothing. And I thought, man, I didn't eat breakfast. And I starved to death if I don't eat breakfast quick. The lady brought, come over and gave me some juice and two little crackers, caramel flavored crackers about this big, like a Waverly cracker, you know. And she laid them down, and I said, what's this? She said, breakfast. <laughs> 
<laughs> I said, at our church, we call it communion. If, if I had to die where I'm sitting, this is a fact what I'm telling you. I said, well, I, I just didn't need, I said, she said, we don't have time to serve breakfast on a flight from Atlanta to Louisville. And I said, well, you know, you had time to bring me them two little crackers. <laughs> you, could have, you could have brought me a piece of fat back and a biscuit in the same amount of time. I said, I tell you one thing, I, I, I'm on, I'll eat before I leave here. She said, well, we'll have food going home. Tonight, I was told I was coming back tonight. She said, well, we'll have food going home. She said that we'd get some potted meat and onion on the way back. <laughs> Woo! From now on, before I agree with one of these things, a bill trailer, I'm going to find out if it's budget. <laughs> Speaking of communion, Dad Spears' youngest sister, Aunt Pearl, most of you on the platform here know Aunt Pearl. She was a Nazarene pastor, and uh, her husband was very supportive of her and helped out in any way he could. Well, she was serving communion that morning, this Sunday morning, and uh, when she took a drink of the grape juice, she said, it liked to took the top of my head off. <laughs> so after service, she asked her, Uncle Logan said, Logan, what in the world happened to that grape juice? He said, well, we had a larger crowd than I expected, and I saw we were going to run out, so I poured in some beet juice. <laughs> Now, expecting grape juice and taking a drink of that, can you imagine? <laughs> Blow your head right off. Yeah. All right, Joe. We were in uh, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, talking about taking the top off of your head off. <laughs> Greensboro folks here. But anyway, we were in the Acock Auditorium. This is back in the 70s. They had refreshments backstage for the singers. So the prophets were on stage singing. We had a large crowd. It was on a Sunday afternoon. Labriska and I poured us a glass of tea and she took a drink of hers, and she said, Honey, don't drink that tea. About that time it hit me, it was like a poison gas, and, uh, and it made my eyes burn, and my nose burn, and my lips started swelling, and it turned out that it was mace. Somebody had sprayed mace near the window that drew the, the air, the fan drew the wind, you know, in from the window. Well, it went out on stage, and just wiped out the prophets. They ran. <laughs> Amazing. Sp speaking, speaking of knocking your head off, this, this is a fact what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> what about all the other things? <laughs> we were singing at Heritage Hall in Lexington. This is a few weeks ago, uh, Heritage Hall. And, and, and on the program was a comedian called Carl uh, Urey and, and Boots Randolph. Well, I never had played a program with them before, so I tried to stand a little straighter and suck my stomach in, you know, trying to look good. And uh, <laughs> Now, I went up on the stage, stage pretty much like this right here, curtain pretty much like this right here. I come up on that side, and this guy was reading off, you know, things about us. And I stopped right there on the edge, and Geraldine and Jan was on the steps. And the curtain, just like that right there. Well, always there's a rail, you know, back at the back of the stage. That's, yeah, always. I, 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 I had my guitar on. I don't pull myself loose here. They got me wired, but uh, I had my guitar on, and the guy was taking a little bit of time, so I just kept 
going back <laughs> into that curtain and landed. <laughs> Every part of my body landed at the same time back of that stage. Well, all the people, the, the thing was sold out. All the people saw me. You know, all the bright lights was on. The guy was over here. He didn't see me, the MC. But they saw me. And, they, and, and all together, they went, ooh. <laughs> well, when I landed, uh, see how crooked that finger is? I, try, I tried to grab <laughs> My finger's broke. <laughs> Don't laugh. I can't use that. <laughs> can't use I, that. I tried to grab the curtain. I tried to grab the curtain, but I just got th these three fingers. Sprung them all, broke my middle finger. Ask anybody. But, but I hit the floor, solid on my back, knocked every ounce of breath out of me. Well, I'm strut and Geraldine's screaming, you know how she gets. She starts with, oh! Oh, and little Jan, they run down all the steps. I said, go to stay, go to stay. See, he's bringing us home. And, and, and there's some pretty girls back there. You know, it was on the program. And, pretty, and then I heard one of them say, see, I was trying to get up. I wasn't hurt, really. I fall a lot. But... <laughs> But the breath was knocked out of If you've ever had it knocked out of you, you don't do much. Uh, so I'm trying to get up. You know, I just can't breathe. I'm trying to get up. And one of them real pretty girl, real, real, real pretty, said, oh, I'm scared he's broke his hip. That's what you say about old people fall. Yeah. Get Rex to tell you about checking in the hotel in uh, Fort Worth, Texas on his first trip out of North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hear that. How about Texas it, Rex? Hotel. <laughs> Texas Hotel. That was, uh, I was still with the Homeland Harmony Quartet, and uh, uh, that was my, about one of the first weeks out. So, <laughs> never stayed in a hotel, never been in one. So, uh, we got out, and uh, the group, Everybody up here knows about the Hotel Texas. Had some little small rooms that uh, for about, you could rent for about five or six dollars. So uh, Connor checked us all in. I went to my room and uh, they had a couch in there. And that's all, just a couch. Uh, uh, I, I had never seen. It's a short couch, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'd never, I'd never seen a couch that made a bed. So I couldn't find a bed. <laughs> So I wasn't going to call anybody and ask them. <laughs> so I slept on the couch. And uh, I never found a blanket, never found a pillow, never found a bed. So I, I didn't tell anybody. We left the next day. I never told anybody. And about two or three... <laughs> I love old people. <laughs> Two or three weeks later, we was riding down the road, and Connor said, well, I, we were booked back in Fort Worth. <laughs> the boy that was seen with us, Jim Cole, he said, I, let's go somewhere else to stay. He said, I, they got the thickest towels that I've ever seen. He said, you can't... There's no way to take one of them towels and dry your ears. They're so thick. <laughs> Found out he'd been using the bath mat. <laughs> what a sight. Uh, Joel, how about, a, how about a neighbor's bus or a bus in a neighbor's house? Isn't there a story behind that? Oh, it? we've had some experiences with runaway buses. I grew up down in Louisiana where the land is flat, and in Tennessee you've got a lot of hills and you can have a lot of mishaps. So we had a real nice uh, Silver Eagle bus, and we sold it to country singer Bob Lumen. This was back about 73. With the understanding that uh, we could use the bus for two more weeks to travel in until we got another one. Well, after we made the deal, 
he wanted the bus immediately. He said, Hemp Hill, I, I want to take my bus to Texas. I said, what are we going to travel in? He said, well, you can take my bus. Well, it was an old, uh, real old bus, had on, been owned by a lot of different country singers. It went dog-legged down the road. <laughs> it had been wrecked, and you could stick your hand out beside the windshield, between the windshield and the frame. It smoked something awful, and it had Bob Lumen and the honky-tonk playboys on the side. <laughs> And, and it just so happened that we were playing Labriska's home church in Evansville. So we kind of hid the bus around back, you know. But anyway, we got in to Nashville about, oh, I guess four or five o'clock on Saturday, Saturday morning. We were playing Knoxville that night. I said, guys, this bus scares me. We're not going to travel in it. We're going to take cars and trailers. So uh, some of the guys slept on the bus after we got in, and our driver had parked it. He thought he set the park brake. But anyway, about 10 o'clock that morning, uh, somebody come running. Hemp Hill, get up. Your bus ran away, ran down the hill, and hit your neighbor's house. So I jumped up and ran down there, and the nose of this bus had gone through the picture window, <laughs> crashed in the brick, <laughs> and was sitting in the living room. The nose was in the living room of this house and nobody home. And about that time, the lady and her daughter came driving up. They were our neighbors, but I didn't know them that well. But she, I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. Our bus ran into your house. She said, oh, I thought my husband gave you permission to park it over here. <laughs> the stories today, huh? How about it for Les? How about it for Mr. Blackwood? And Glenn? How about it for Joel Hippel? How about it for the old snake man himself, Wendy Bagwell? How about it for Mr. Rock Spear? How about it for Brother Rex Milan? How about it for the other Brother Spear, Brother Ben? How about it for our maestro? Uh, thank you, gentlemen, so very, very much. And I'll tell you what, we're indebted to Mr. Bill Trailer and Homeland yeah. for putting this all together. Mr. Bill Trailer. Gentlemen, thank you so much. This was great. A great afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We're going to sing I Feel Like Traveling On. Jerry, stay up here with us and do that. Bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. another round of applause for our great panel.